This is considered part two to the Mysterious Sounds video released in 2018. So in part one, which would have been that video, the brother and sister that recorded a mysterious sound at the front entrance. Um, I kept it basic and simple, just reported on the event itself. Um, initially when they came forward to me, I, uh, I knew a little bit more about what they had. I suggested to them that uh, they take it off YouTube because that's part of how they presented it to me. They did do a partial upload to YouTube. Um, because I knew that I would have to tell this story and I didn't want them to suffer any ridicule. So that's why they're private at my suggestion. Maybe they'll come forward one day uh, publicly, but for now that's just the way it's going to be. So in part two, what I'm going to do is present additional information that um, just basic facts without speculation. I mean, this is already going to be hard to believe anyway. But this is a non-speculative uh, part two where I just, uh, just discuss like a timeline of events. So the day they were there and the day before when I was here. So there's going to be a part three. You're going to want a part three if you're going to get really into this. But I'm going to try to keep this uh, a little short. So the day before they recorded their event, I was out here at the cemetery. I was between the creek and the pond. So if you're familiar with this area, um, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not, go look up some maps. But um, so between the creek and the pond, I heard this weird melody. Um, like human singing kind of melody, you know, nothing like birds or anything. And it really caught me off guard. I'm like, what in the hell is that? I started walking a little bit further towards the cemetery to, you know, go through the entrance by the pond. As I got near the fence, I heard the sound again, but a little bit louder. Coming from the same direction, it was directional. And I turned and said, you know, what the hell is that? And I'm, I'm just pausing, waiting for it, waiting for it again. Very unusual. I'm like, all right, whatever. So I go into the cemetery. I uh, go past the Fulton Monument. And I get kind of near the uh, center of the cemetery, um, near the shields area, stuff like that. And that's when I heard it again. Except this time, it was a little bit elevated to my west. It was as loud as a um, PA speaker, like a police PA, if you can imagine that. Um, extremely loud. It caught me off guard, obviously. I actually flinched. I ducked down low to the ground a little bit, looked in the direction of where the sound came from, and was like, wow, um, I knew that wasn't normal, and I just kind of looked around and said, if that was you guys, that was a good one. You guys meaning the uh, you know unseen force, intelligent kind of stuff around here. Um, of course, I'm skipping some details. It's probably going to come out in part three. So, well, it would have to. It's kind of important details, I think. So, unfortunately, I wasn't recording anything. No devices were running. However, on the next day... Um, Apparently, this brother and sister came in and recorded the sound and eventually um, came forward to me and said, Hey, you know, I think we got something. Maybe you want to take a look at it. Um, they did upload it to YouTube initially. Now, the moment I heard it, I knew that is what I heard that day. And because I not only heard it that day, there's more to it probably that will come out in part three, but I knew that I would have to tell some backstory. And there's going to be a lot of skepticism, a lot of ridicule. And I didn't want it to be reflected upon them. So I suggested to them to maybe make that YouTube video private. Um, because I'm going to eventually have to say something. And uh, so they did that. Uh, for, for the moment, they're still going to be remaining private. Now some people, when I initially uh, let out like version uh, or, or uh, part one of the video, I guess you could say... Um, a lot of people had their take. I asked, what What do you think you hear? That kind of stuff. Just keeping it simple and basic. Um, some people, you know, have their different take on it. It's the ones that say, oh, they, they could do that. You know, it's fake and all this kind of... I'm going to tell you right now, it's not fake. Uh, if you go back and listen to it, they had no idea what, you know, what was in the environment. And if they played it off as a joke, 
Um, I'm here to tell you that because I'm a witness to the day prior. Um, no, they they couldn't have faked all that. They absolutely, could. in my my opinion, let's just put it that way, right? I mean, how do we define proof? Maybe I'm lying, right? But I knew they were not fraudulent. So, in order to transition into part three, I have to give a little bit of context and still tell you a part of what had occurred and why I know they weren't faking it. Not because I just heard the sound, uh, but because when I immediately heard it as well, I knew what it was. Now that is rare. How can I make this claim? Well, let's get into that. So I performed a meditation session. This was a few weeks or a month or so before this event had occurred. And during this session, it took about five minutes. I don't speak out loud. I just think things. I put this thought out. And I said, if you are who I think you are, and that's to this unseen force that interacts with us. And I went on this spiel. And I'll try to keep it short because I'm not going to recite like five minutes of this stuff. Part of the key elements were... You probably should already know, but in case you don't, and I said you could use singing or specific audio frequencies to get yourself over to us audibly, and that you can use radio waves, existing radio waves in the environment, as a way to ride your signal on there, maybe induce it, cause some effect, whatever, okay? We'll get into part three with this. Remember, this is all experimental. I'm just putting this thought out there. And I'm like really anxious about it in a way because I'm like, now's the time. If you are who I think you are, now's the time we need to make this happen. We need to make that contact, this this type of contact. And in uh, the frequency, audio frequency area, I did reference only one specific frequency, which was uh, one kilohertz. And there's a reason for that, which I'll, I'll, again, I'll get into in part three. Um, as part of this meditation, um, this whole thing is what I consider a game. As part of the game, I usually say things like, let others be the ones to experience it, and hopefully the information makes its way back to me. And, I, and this is a game that I adopted from something else, so this isn't like my idea. But I said, you know, I really would like to partake in this one if I could. Part of the meditation, I said, we need to have multiple devices recording at the same time, hopefully to get it captured. Um, toward the end, I did make a statement of, um, please leave me something technical so that I know that it's you. And I did make a joke. I made a statement on what they could say. Now, it was just a joke. Because, uh, you know, well, <laughs> let's pause this for a moment. I don't like planes. So, yeah, I made this statement toward the end. I don't know if I want to say it right now. Um, because when I retell the story, um, or the whole background of this at the Grove, and, and you know, visitors here personally, um, maybe over 50 people or something so far, it's had a good reception. Um, I, I kind of found a way to, I think, to present it where they can absorb it better. Um, very few are in disbelief, I guess you could say. So that's a good thing. Anyways sidetracked because of a plane sticking to this no speculation kind of thing just the facts right so i said these things i did these things whatever in my head um you know if i didn't personally hear this sound effect especially being it's so loud these kinds of things like partaking in this i probably have a little hard time with it but at the same time even if i did not listening to them listening to the woman say you know um is there anybody here kind of thing and then she says nope at the end and the sound is louder than they are and they've got the mics next to them now as um as part of this what i find interesting is that she's a believer in this stuff the brother was not so the whole time he wasn't recording or something like that so i did do an interview of of her discussing all this it's a private interview maybe I'll release some of it I don't know but what she had told me is that for some reason 
right before this audible event took place, the brother was compelled to start his phone and recording. Didn't know why, but he just did it. Just stating the timeline of events here. So, and for what it's worth, I was meditating in the very same spot, or at least five feet from it, where they recorded this event. Don't know if it means anything, but I'm just stating these, these little things here. Um, I should probably also add, when I heard the sound that was elevated, speaking of elevated planes, so when I heard the sound and it was elevated and came toward me, now it was, it was different, it was pretty loud, you know, like it swept, it was a sound that kind of just swept at you. Now when it got like toward me, even though I, I was crouching down, um, there was a different quality to this audio. Um, unlike anything I could even describe. So what's recorded on their devices, the brother and sister, um, is the same thing what I heard. Being able to play back their stuff, you can hear these other, these other things. So it doesn't represent the quality of what I heard um, when it swept down at me. Now what you hear in it, and you got to keep replaying it back. And I don't like doing this, where you like you front load people like what you're supposed to hear. I mean, let's face it, like most EVPs, we're not supposed to know what we're hearing. You know, it's all interpretation and all this kind of stuff. I mean, so when I did release it, the interpretation by most people was, oh, something is screaming. People that hear it in person on a good uh, Bose speaker that I have um, can hear good quality. So I don't know what you're hearing on your phone or your earbuds or whatever it is when you're playing back the YouTube stuff. But the people here hear a melody. They hear, they like, that sounds like somebody's, or, you know, somebody's singing and some will say a group singing. I'm like, yeah, it does. It's a melody. But there's also a statement in there. And all I kept hearing for two hours, smoking cigarettes, looking at the spectrogram, all I kept hearing was Wojciech, Wojciech. And for what it's worth, a lot of our EVPs out here are English. So this did sound like foreign. So what the hell is Wojciech? And it occurred to me, I'm like, holy. I, toward the end when I said, leave me something technical so I know that it's you. And I said, and just walking away, I'm just like, hey, you could always just leave me a voice check. Voice check, voice check, voice check, right? Now there was this, what looked like to be a disturbance in the spectrogram after voy. So, you know, maybe that's why I'm not hearing the full voice. I don't know, but it's saying void check. Now, all this is unusual in the environment. I mean, we shouldn't be hearing this melody. We shouldn't be hearing something making a statement, no matter what it's, what it's saying, right? But then when you got the headphones on, I had studio headphones on. So it's not like those little earbuds. And I kept hearing this, this tone. And I'm looking on the spectrogram, and I see this line at the bottom around the one kilohertz area. And it would start just as the singing started, and would end just as the singing ended. I'm like, well wait a minute, I did give a reference to one kilohertz. And so I beefed it up. Um, I used a special program to do it. It's a little difficult to do it. So just that particular slice of the spectrogram, I was able to, to you know, take it out and, and amplify it where it's around like 1.2 kilohertz. Now it could be off or whatever, but that's a hell of a coincidence that I referenced one kilohertz, which I'll get into why I, I referenced that in another, uh, like part three. But I did put that out there, and that's in the recording. So, singing, tone, voice check, or voice check, as I jokingly said. Pretty interesting stuff. Now, I'm not speculating. If you think I'm speculating, <laughs> I'm just sticking to events. Excuse me here. Um, yeah, I gotta pause pretty hot out here. I need a lot of water. Anyway, um, what am I missing here? <sighs> Let me think. Only thing I can think of is that, um, now the brother and sister material, which is available for you to download, um, their, their mics, the microphones, the left channel mics were louder than the right channel mics. Um, one of the aspects to 
to all this was what I found very, um, very interesting. Her camera, the audio, well, I consider it a little bit louder, I guess, because there was little, you know, little interference. But I guess the brothers was, was a little louder. She thought her brothers was a little louder. Um, I didn't like to, to um, use the brother's audio as an example because he his particular phone had a cracked screen, and you can hear the buzz, which is throughout the entire video. Um, hers, obviously no buzz. The tone is there. It's not a byproduct of the phone. Um, I mean, it's pretty obvious even when it's you know the starting and ending of, of this whole thing of the, the singing effect. Um, but the... Uh, the buzz, I mean, is a good example of if people think that there's a technical problem in the audio. You can use his as a reference to buy products and stuff like that. Um, again, I'm not, I'm not going to speculate on anything. I'm just sticking to the facts, you know, like crack, screen, buzz. What else am I missing? Hmm. It's getting a little sunny here. Um, so, facts. There's um, the sound that I heard. That was like the PA loudness, which was ridiculously loud. Totally unusual for any environment, I guess, especially in the woods. Come on. Um, wasn't as loud on their audio, but their audio was louder than they were talking, yet they heard nothing. So, anyway, uh, part three, we'll get into um, a little bit of speculation, I guess you could say. But the reasoning why I put out that meditation, those ideas, or whatever you want to call it. Where did it all stem from? And where is this possibly going? As far as I'm concerned, the contact that I've been looking for has been made. The contact we are looking for has been made. What you may think it is might not be what it is, but again, that's speculation, and we'll get into that later, so... Whew, off my chest a bit. Um, there might even be more than part three. We'll see. But uh, congratulations, everybody. Contact has been made. I think I closed it. That's closed it. Is there anybody here?